Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to see you this morning. We thank God for you. We hope and pray all is well with you. We, we, we ask that you, even as you join us on YouTube, come and join us in person every Sunday morning, 930 to 1030. 9.45 to 10.30. And just come and join us as we enjoy the Lord together. Let's pray. Father, we come down in the name of your son Jesus, thanking you for all things. We thank you, God, for this time. We pray that as we magnify you through your word, that you will be glorified in all that is done. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. This morning, our lesson study deals with forgiving your neighbor. Well, Forgive your neighbor. And, and forgiveness, even within the body of Christ, is a hard task. Because things keep popping up in your mind, what this individual has done to you, and, and just keep on coming. But, but the Lord said, in order for you to be forgiven here on earth, you must forgive one another. So we are to forgive our neighbor. And the way that does is love leads us to forgive. Because we love one another, because God loves us, we are to love each other. Our lesson text comes from Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 35. The first outline is from Matthew 18, 21 to 22. And it reads, Then Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times I tell you, not as many as seven times, Jesus replied, but as 70 times. Now, love leads us to forgive and to keep on forgiving. Love don't have a limit on forgiveness, even though some of us tend to believe we have a limit on forgiveness. But forgiveness is is not, does not have a limit on it. Therefore, and forgive it, and forgive it. So it's important to keep that in mind. Then, it says, as seven times. See, that, that, that number seven, it means that it is you are to forgive as many times as they come back to you and ask for forgiveness. As many times. So it's unlimited. So we are responsible for forgiving as, as many times we are asked to forgive. Here's some, some lasting truth. God's love in our heart leads us to forgive without limit. A believer should never harbor bitterness in their hearts, and God's forgiveness is conditioned upon repentance from sin and reception of Christ as Savior and Lord. The second outline, Matthew 18, 23 to 27 says, For this reason the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wants to sell his account, accounts with his servants. When he began selling the accounts, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought before him. Since he did not have the money to pay back, his master commanded that he and his wife and children and everything that he had be sold pay, to pay his debt. And then the servant fell face down before him and said, be patient with me and I will pay you everything that the master 
of that servant had compassion, released them, and forgave him their loan. God extends forgiveness. If God forgives, extends forgiveness, we as his followers must also do the same thing. We find that the king wanted to sell his debts, but one of the servants owed him a mass amount of money, lots and lots of money. He was unable to pay, so the, the, the master said, sell the man, his wife, his children, and everything that he had to repay the debt. But the, the servant fell down face first, begged him to forgive the debt. Because of the master's compassion, he forgave this man this great big debt. And so he went on about his business. So because the master extended the forgiveness of the debt on this man, looked like he should have done the same thing with, with, with what he did. So, so because God extends forgiveness, we should extend forgiveness also for those who owe us things. Some lasting truths. Everyone is equally deserving of death for their sin. God graciously extends forgiveness to all. A believer's heart shall have no place for bitterness. And we must receive forgiveness before it applies to us. So, so, so the, the, the master forgave him his sin. Forgave him and he was happy. But look what happens next. Look what happens next. This, this man, this servant, forgot what his master had done for him. And he was mean to this fellow servant. And he just walked all over. Let, let, let's look. Let's look. Third outline. Matthew 28, 20, 18, 28 to 35. L listen. It says, that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, started choking him, and said, pay me what you owe. At that, at, at this, his fellow servant fell down and began begging him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he wasn't willing. Instead, he went and threw him in prison until he could pay what he owed. When the other servants saw what had taken place, they were deeply distressed and went and reported to their master until that happened, until that had happened. Then after he had summoned him, the master said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And because he was angry, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he could pay everything that he owed. So also my heavenly father will do to you unless one of you forgive his brother or sister from their heart. God expects us to forgive even as he has forgiven. So look, look at, don't, don't this remind you of somebody? Look at what happened. This, this servant, after he was forgiven, he found one of his fellow servants that owed him less than, oh, over half the amount that he owed. And he came and he took this man by the neck, choked him, and demanded that he pay back what he had. The man told him, I, I don't have it. I, I Give me time. I, I'll go back and I'll pay you when, when, when I get it. But now, but now, this man did not have compassion on him. 
he demanded that he paid him what he owed. And so he, he, but then his fellow servants, they went and told the, the master. And the master confronted him and, and he asked him, look, were you in the same situation before? Shouldn't you have done the same thing I did for you? The, the, the servant said, I guess he didn't answer, but, but he should have done the same thing. He should have had compassion on that fellow servant because he didn't have it, just like he didn't have it. He should have gave, given him time to find some money from somewhere, find some to pay the debt, but he didn't. He had him thrown in jail. But then the master called him a wicked, wicked wicked servant. Shouldn't you have done the same thing I did for you? You didn't have it. I had compassion on you. Therefore, you should have had compassion on him. We find this in life, though. People are forgiven that, but do not forgive those who owe them. But as believers, we ought to have compassion on those who don't have and forgive the debt. No matter what nobody says, no matter what, what happens, we are responsible for forgiving debt. But, but see, if you don't forgive, the Bible tells us that you will not be forgiven. As Jesus in God forgave us, we are responsible for giving one another. I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard for forgiveness is hard. And, and but now, if you are a true child of God, forgiveness would not be hard for you because of the way you love one another. The, the Bible says, by this men will know that you have love for one another, by the way you love, how you forgive one another, how, how, you, how you really, really, really forgive each other. So, so we are responsible for forgiving another. So, so, so what does forgiveness start with? It starts with love. We must love one another in order to forgive one another. No matter how bad it may seem, we must forgive one another to the fullest. As Christ forgave us, we are responsible for forgiving one another. So, 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 so again, what does forgiveness actually looks like? Forgiveness look like love. The love that we have for another. So, so if we love each other, then we're going to forgive one another in spite of all our differences and in, in spite of what other people say, in spite of everything, forgiveness is mandatory. As believers, we must forgive one another. That's what the Bible said. We are to forgive one another. As Christ forgave us, we must forgive one another. Here's some lasting truth about this third outline. God has provided forgiveness through the work of Christ. God's forgiveness is vast and is not deserved. God expects us to forgive others as he has forgiven. So then, let us forgive. May God richly bless you, my beloved.